Are you ready for pain? Are you ready for suffering? If the answer is yes, then you're ready. Let's talk about tokenism. Like I said, we had multiple positions to fill. The team wanted to hire only white candidates. I wanted to hire only people of color. I wanted to hire only people of color to correct the imbalance that already existed. Remember, this is an organization that had only white people. Only white people in leadership positions and also only white people in the entire organization. So hiring for the few open positions we had, to correct that imbalance, we needed all of those positions to go to people of color. Because I pushed back, the team agreed to hire one person of color, but I had to keep pushing to continue to hire more people of color. Hiring only one person of color is tokenizing. Not having women or people of color in leadership is tokenizing. Have you ever worked for an organization that had the same amount of people of color and women in leadership as they did in the low level positions? Today is March 2nd, which means it's Dr. Seuss's birthday. And that is the perfect time to tell you about why I don't read Dr. Seuss books in my classroom anymore. First, I wanna show you this quote from Maya Angelou, do the best you can until you know better. Then when you know better, do better. I did all the Dr. Seuss things. I loved his books. I knew all of the words to the Lorax and Oh, the Places You'll Go. And then I found out he's super racist. And I'm going to be really honest. When I first heard that, my initial reaction was everybody was racist at that time and his books are still good. I've since done a lot of reflecting on why that was my first thought and how I can do better. But the thing is, it's not even that he was just racist in his life. His books are incredibly racist and anti-Semitic. Think about the stereotypes that kids develop from looking at these pictures. Pause to read this one. I'm gonna make a part two with rhyming books that are alternatives to Seuss. Right, right, man. It makes me feel care. it makes me feel about this big. Yeah, that's how they feel when you misgender them. I want to add to this that in my personal experience, boomers and old folks actually respond really well to being sprayed uh, with water when they do or say something wrong. My stepdad used to say absolutely horrendous shit to me, just whenever he felt like it, because that's the kind of thing a man was allowed to say to whoever he wanted when he was a boy. No, sorry, sir, not anymore. So, uh, about a year and a half ago, two years now, uh, whenever he would say something sideways to me, I would just start dumping a full glass or a full bottle of water in his lap every single time he would say something wrong. And it got to the point where he is immensely respectful of me, he no longer misgenders me, he no longer interrupts me, and he leaves the room when I'm holding liquids. So yeah, it's been tested. If you have an unruly boomer, get out that spray bottle, because they respond really well to that training. That's a nice argument, Senator. Why don't you back it up with a source? My source is that I made it the fuck up. So you support misandry? You think it's okay to hate men just for being men? I don't think you understand why misandry exists in today's society. Like, you know the only reason why misandry exists is because misogyny exists, right? Any person of a marginalized or oppressed group is absolutely allowed to hate their oppressors. And it is not the same as the other way around. The same way that when a black person or any other person of color says, I hate white people, I don't take it offensively because I understand that they're more often than not, not talking about me individually. They're talking about white people as a whole. They're talking about whiteness, white supremacy, which more often than not, a lot of white people engage and continue to uphold. And there is a big difference between a black person or any other person of color coming up to someone and going, I hate you because you're white, which by the way, I've literally never seen happen before versus a black person or any other person of color going, I hate white people. I get it. I'm part of the parchment paper platoon. I hate white people too. Well, yeah, that's reverse racism. You're, you're racist against your own, your own race. Why did I waste my breath? Quick reminder for the cis gay white men and queer white people on this app. We are us. Our queerness cannot eradicate our whiteness. In fact, lately, we are one of the biggest beneficiaries of white supremacy. We are some of the most complicit and most favorite tools of oppression that white supremacy uses. 
But how can that be? Here's how it is. White supremacy doesn't care about your queerness. The only reason it cares about it is so it can use it to advance whiteness. It does this by holding up white queer people as symbols of progression. Who represents queer culture in this country? The cis gay white man. Whose culture is he really representing? That created by black and brown queer people. And white supremacy is all here for that. They're like, yes, we can use this queer white person to A, convince them that progress has been made, B, convince straight America that progress has been made, and C, all at the same time, continue to subjugate and oppress black and brown people. Cis gay white men, the fight isn't over just because the straights lives on the cover of House Beautiful. Queer liberation will never occur until all of us are liberated. Hello, beautiful humans. So a couple days ago, I posted a video in which I said that there is no such thing as underperforming schools, that those schools are performing exactly the way they're designed to in order to maintain existing power structures in society. And one of the people who saw it, Instructor Zulu, um, asked a question in a stitch that he made that basically said, if that's the case, then why don't the diverse educators and administrators in those schools do something to fix that? And the answer, as far as I'm concerned, is as simple to articulate as it is hard to fix, which is control. As someone who's taught in a underperforming school um, for the last couple of decades, um, the things that we can't fix are the things that we don't have control over. We don't have control over the history of housing segregation based on race or income. We don't have control over the school funding formula. We don't have control over the state testing mandates. We don't have control over which standards we're told we have to teach to. Uh, we don't have control over any of the economic factors that lead some of our students to have trouble accessing the education that's being provided for them. We don't have any control over how many of them are working jobs or taking care of siblings or don't have a place to study, uh, don't have food, are housing insecure. We have no control over any of those things. And because we don't have control over any of those things, we can't fix the big problem. We can do what we can in our small ways, and we do, 100% we do. But if we really want to look at why certain schools, and by certain schools, I mean predominantly schools that are majority students of color or majority low-income students or rural schools, if we really want to understand why they're underperforming based on comparing them to other schools that don't deal with the systemic issues that they deal with, then there's nothing, there's only so much that we can do. Hi, I saw there was another video of a shooting of an unarmed white man. He must be devastated. I don't know why this keeps happening. Whenever a tragedy like this happens, I think about my own biases and how far I've come. Like when you started working here, I was so upset. I even called my mom. I cried on the phone to her because I thought you were a domestic terrorist. I really thought you were gonna hurt us. It's so crazy now, but I mean, that's what I grew up thinking. Like, that's what my whole family thinks. So I just have to unlearn that, you know? Anyway, I'm glad we can have these talks and I'm glad that we can grow together. But if you need anything, Megan, just let me know. Can we talk about those beauty gurus on YouTube, the women who have videos of the uh, my boyfriend tries to do my makeup for me challenge? And in the video, the guy is so aggressively trying to pretend like he doesn't know what any of the products are used for because he doesn't want to look gay like he he, he picks up an eyeliner and he's like eyeliner um <laughs> how could i possibly know where this goes i'm a dude like connor i know you know the difference between lipstick and lip gloss and admitting that is not gonna make a dick all of a sudden show up in your mouth i don't know what you're trying to prove like like not knowing what contour and highlight are. I understand because that takes more knowledge, but like I, I don't play football. 
I might not know all the rules of football, but I'm not going to pick up a football and be like, whoa, what's this bad boy used for? Tennis? <laughs> no hetero. America is the land of opportunities where everyone has equal chances to make it in life. I'm sure the original creator meant well when he made this video, but let's remember that intent and impact are very different. Even if the intentions of your video were well, you just ended up saying a bunch of problematic things that were also very dismissive of issues that people actually go through. And this is coming from somebody who also kind of made it, uh, like especially from the background that I came from. I'm not a millionaire, I'm never gonna be. Educators admit to that fact when they begin their journey in their career. But I know so many people that have the same background as I do, that are just as smart as I do, if not smarter, that work just as hard as I do, if not harder, that will not be in my position because of the circumstances that were in front of them. And although anybody can make it in the US, that does not mean that everyone has an equal opportunity. That doesn't mean that you won't make it, but that does mean that some people will not even have the access to have the first step into the door of being able to find success. Don't be goofy. If I could have your attention, hot gay people should be called fruit snacks. Thank you, goodbye.